I always found it very powerful when when uh, when Candice talks about separation and uh, the fact that that the uh, the only reason that we believe we we are separate is because we believe we are separate. And if you just look at your own experience, I mean, how are you separate from anything else? It's it's not logical. It just doesn't make no sense. You just you've got an idea that I am separate. And then you you think this is a problem, then you then you look into practices that well they say that they're going to end end this feeling of separation. That's that's the uh, that's the idea, and so what we're looking for, we don't we don't know what we're looking for basically, and we're quite frightened of what we're looking for, but we think that we need it as well. So this is this is this is what I um, found. I tr I tested everything in conventional life, like uh, um, in uh, relationships, money, career, things like this, um, and found that there was there was there was always something missing from my experience. I didn't feel complete, no matter how uh, conventionally fulfilled my life was. There was always something missing, and so. I turn turn my focus to, you know, really looking into what why I don't feel like this, and is there a, is there a solution? So there are lots of other practices out there, and I tested all of these, and uh, it was always the same. There's always something missing, and uh, when I came to Balanced View, it was such a relief to to finally be given the permission just to relax and just allow things to just just leave it alone. You know, you've tested uh, the conventional approach to to life, and and I would also include so-called alternative practices as conventional approaches because we we're we're still looking for the same thing when we do these things. That is to change our thoughts, emotions, and circumstances. So whether you're trying to do that through working in a bank, or 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 whether you're doing that by sitting in a cave. The, it's exactly the same. There's no difference. If you're trying to find well-being through rearranging your thoughts, emotions, and circumstances, that's in balance view we call it cause call these data. Then you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life, and um, that doesn't really need to be said because you all know this. So when we have a decision to make, and especially if we're quite new to balance view then it's not surprising that we still base our decisions on that, that mechanism. There's so much da data that it's impossible to decide. And uh, the more you rely on, you know, the more you look into things, the more you plan, the more options come, become available, the more impossible it is to make decisions. This was my experience. And um, Candice shared something really fantastic um, in a talk quite recently, I think it was at the summer gathering, about the imbalanced view uh, that, that when we have groups, we, we plan and, um, and try and work things out on a conventional level, and, and then we do something completely different. <laughs> so <laughs> the most important thing, whatever you decide, is, is just to continue to integrate the four mainstays into whatever you're doing, because that, in this way, you can extract yourself from the the apparent confusion of life. You know, life is not confusing. It basically it does boil down to you either recognize open intelligence or not. That's how simple it is. And it doesn't matter how, how um, afflictive your data is, how crazy the data is, that's the st that it all boils down to that choice. And uh, the, the, the other four mainstays, um, the training, the trainer, the community, they're just there to support you. Um, in this in this simple choice, and you know it's not a mystery. If you hang around with people who are doing something that you that you're interested in, then you get better at doing it. That's what happens in life. If you want to learn to play the trumpet, if you have a great trumpet teacher and you hang out with other people who are playing the trumpet all day, you're going to become a really good trumpet player. If you hang out with people who are interested in boiling eggs, <laughs> then you know, and that's all you do, then you're not going to have all of the advantages of hanging out with, with other trumpet players. And if you sit there saying, well, hang on a minute, I'm not getting much better at the trumpet, 
you know, all I'm doing is boiling eggs all day. <laughs> I'm, I'm really good at that, but I want to be a trumpet player. At some point, you're, you, with discernment, you'll realize that it's, it's a no-brainer. It's actually really nice to hang out with people who are, who are relying on open intelligence. And it's actually a real pain in the ass to hang out with people who aren't. And it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how much you love them or how brilliant these people are. At some point, it's just like, I'm, I just don't, I don't want to go there anymore. You know, I have, I have fantastic friends, like really, really precious friends that I love dearly and I'd do anything for them. I don't, and I don't, I don't want to hang out with them anymore. I do hang out with them, maybe once or twice a year. But, um, you know, I'm there and all they talk about is blame, judge, blaming, judging, criticizing, gossiping. And when, when I'm there, that doesn't happen so much. Uh, I still love being with them, but I'd much rather be with people who, who are relying on open intelligence. Now, the crazy thing is, is I'd much rather be with people who I really don't like, who are relying on open intelligence, than people that I really love who aren't relying on open intelligence. That's how powerful this practice is. And this is, why, um, this is why world peace is possible, because I can, I can be with people who, quite frankly, I would, I would like to... I've got to be careful here. <laughs> um, be very unpleasant towards. But because I'm relying on open intelligence, and they're relying on open intel intelligence, all of that negative data is, 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 is just not there. It doesn't, it doesn't distract me anymore. And so... I can't emphasize how powerful this is. The responsibility can only be something that you can actually do. So, you know, when we feel responsible for how other people, people act, we can't do anything about it. So how can we be responsible for that? We're not even, we can't even control our own data. So how can we be responsible for that either? The only thing we can be responsible for is something that we can realistically do and what we can realistically do is, whenever we remember, we can relax and acknowledge open intelligence. That's it. That's all you need to do. I mean, that, that isn't much to ask of anyone. And, and the more you do that, you start to see that there's a great free, freeing up of all of the um, restrictions that we've placed on ourselves and other people. So when, I, when I'm with my old friends or when I'm with my family at Christmas, it's, uh, it's always the same. You know, there's lots of data that comes up data of um, cynicism and criticism in my head, you know, like, why are you talking about this subject? It's so boring, it's so, you know, it's, it, it's meaningless. But that, again, this is something that's been completely outshone, and all I recognize in myself is complete love. You know, re real, total, it's just amazing to finally recognize how amazing I am, and then I see this in everyone else, and that's that's the basis of, of the communication. And, uh, you know, I can really say that my, my family members are my greatest teachers because even now they'll, they'll come up with things that bring up a lot of negativity. And um, before this training, my solution would be to either not go and see my family or to criticize them or get into an argument. And now, um, there's no, there is no need for that to, to occur anymore. It's just been outshone by complete appreciation, for, especially for my parents. You know, can you imagine, I mean, some of you are parents, but you've got, you've got all of your own data, and then you've got, you've got your data of your children to deal with as well. They do a fantastic job. You know, it might, it might seem like a, a bit uh, out, out of control and maybe um, critical at, at a lot of points, but they've got two, well, if they have more than one ch ch child, they've got, they've got their partner, that maybe they've got four children with all their data, they've had that for a lifetime. It's not surprising every now and again that they're gonna say something that's gonna annoy you. <laughs> you know, how, I mean, it's, it's just the most amazing thing. And um, so, so very practically, and I know in the 12 empowerments, are you on number seven today, or six, seven? Um, when, you, when you get to eight and nine, without giving too, too much away, you'll, you'll be given very, very practical um, tools, very simple tools to be able to
be with your greatest teachers, i.e. your parents and your brothers and sisters, in a, very, in a very empowering way, both for yourself and for them. Completely new way of approaching uh, the relationship, um, which essentially is what everyone is doing here, which is why, again, like being at the center, this is, this is basically uh, evidence of a new human society. Um, because everyone who comes here probably has more afflictive data than when, you know, before they arrived, which, which we don't put on the poster. <laughs> um, but the, it's, that's actually a great sign because it means that you're just allowing things to flow on by and that, and that, that great energy of usually afflictive data, that's, that's our true power. We've, we've been trying to stuff it down and, and, um, and modify it, make it less afflictive. <coughs> but when we allow it to be as it is, it, you, you just start to see that, you know, really just how powerful you are and how much there is in that, in that surge of either negative or positive. And so the, the practice of short moments and the other four mainstays just allow you to get comfortable with this great power that you have. And it, do, it can feel quite overwhelming um, in the beginning especially, which again is why it's, impo it's important to rely on the four mainstays. But gradually you'll see that you're, you're, you're just claiming your natural birthright. This, this way of being is the natural way to be. It's not natural to take ourselves to be a, a small, tiny little collection of descriptions. Um, and so simultaneously, for most people, there's usually a great relief combined with a, 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 a getting used to this, this great power. Because I, you know, the things in my life that I thought needed to change were, um, I, was, I was very uh, frustrated and annoyed. And, you know, for, for no reason or for lots of reasons, it didn't matter, that, you, that was my basic underlying quality, you could say. And uh, I was convinced that in order to be okay, I needed to get rid of this or modify it. And through this training, um, it, was, uh, it was such a relief just to say, well, you, do, you, you don't have to do that. You can't do that anyway, you know. And, uh, and it wasn't easy in the beginning. But nothing's changed, really. All of the data is the same. My parents are the same. My sisters are the same. But what has changed now, and again, the talk we listened with Candice about um, our sympathetic attachment to only a few people. Now I feel like everyone, really everyone is uh, my intimate partner or my, brothers and my brother or my sister, which might sound like a complete nightmare, but um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's it, in the truest sense, um, you know, everyone on the planet is my intimate partner. Um, and that includes people who aren't relying on balanced view. It's the most incredible thing, and it all comes from recognizing your own perfection, because that's the same for everyone. That basis, the default setting of humanity is perfection, and uh, everyone has it. Uh, it's just been obscured by our uh, obsession with, with these tiny little uh, packets of data that we take ourselves to be. So when you see this in yourself, that you're perfect, your exaltation, you're not exalted, you're just pure exaltation. You, you see this in everyone else, regardless of what they're saying, how they're acting. Um, yeah, and it doesn't mean that you become some sort of passive, drooling vegetable who just sits there smiling, I'm perfection, you know, d not doing anything. It's, it's the opposite, in fact. You'll find that you, you, don't, you don't need to say, uh, things as much, but if you do need to say something, then you'll find the words that are needed to be said. And just finally, on a very practical level, that means that, for example, when I'm with my family and they're being quite hurtful and, and gossiping about somebody, someone else in our family, then I, I have said, you know, do you mind not talking like that about somebody who isn't here? I, d I don't want to listen to it. I'd much rather hear about the amazing things that they've done, because they have done amazing things. Let's talk about that. And sometimes the reactions are quite negative, but often it's like, oh yeah, wow, sorry. You know, because people, it, it happens automatically. 
It's been going on for so long that automatically cynicism, gossip and criticism just come out. And sometimes people don't even know that they're doing it. So what we, what we gain through this training as well is an unshakable courage, unflinching courage that this is, this, this is really correct. This is the way to be, you know, respect, dignity, appreciation. That's, that's how we're meant to, to be with ourselves and others. And like Candice said at the end, you, you, you really want to shout it out.